Hi, I'm Daniel from the Baidu Research. Today, I'm going to talk about our out-of-order symbolic execution work, which is used to detect your cache time inside channel leaks. Cache is a high-speed storage between the CPU and the main memory. If we ask the CPU to read a variable, it will first query the cache. If the data is already in cache, the read operation will be very fast. If the data is not in cache, the query will go to the main memory, which needs much more time and such timing difference might leak sensitive information. For example, function full takes a secret as the input. Assume that before executing the load instruction, the first 64 bytes of an array are already in cache. Then the external adversary can measure the execution time of the load instruction. If it is very fast, like a typical cache hit, then secret must be less than 64 because the first 64 bytes are in cache. If it use much more time, then secret should be greater than 63 due to your cache miss. So the value range of the secret is leaked by the cache timing. In this work, our key insight is that a timing leak-free program may still leak sensitive information when running under out of order execution due to the reordered memory instructions during runtime scheduling. Next, I will use an example to explain our motivation. On the left side, we have a simple program which has several variables, a for loop, two memory load instructions, and three memory store instructions. x is the secret input, and disclosing the value of x by the cache timing will cause a leak. Here we also assume that i, j, k are register variables, and accessing them needs no memory visit. On the right side, we have a control flow of this program. There's only one program path. The program first store y, then executes a loop to store the array z. After a loop, it loads the value of x to j and stores zj, and finally it reads y. We use the 256-byte fully associative cache with the LRU replacement policy to study the cache behavior of a program. Each cache line has one byte, and there are 256 cache lines in total. So if we run a program, the first start y will put y into cache, and a loop will also map the whole array into a cache. The cache was initially empty, so all these memory operations cause cache misses. Next, we read variable x. Since the whole cache has been occupied, x will evict y because y is in the least recently used cache line. It is also a cache miss. Then we have the store operation to zj. At this point, the array z is already in cache, so it must be a cache hit. Finally, we load y. Because y was evicted by x, so it must be a cache miss. Now, let's go back to the example. Here we observe that line 8 is data independent of line 6 and line 7 because they are accessing different variables. At line 6, the program load x for the first time and it may lead a long time due to a slow main memory visit. By contrast, 98 loads y and y was accessed at line 3, so y may still in cache and loading it would be much faster. As a result, line 8 could be scheduled before line 6 and line 8, as shown by the figure on the right. In this case, we analyze the cache behavior again. The first start y and the loop also runs as before. Next, we go to load y and find that y is in cache, so it is a cache hit. After that, we execute load x. Since the cache is fully occupied, x needs to evict z0 from the least recently used cache line. Finally, we reach stall zj. Right now, z0 is no longer in cache, so visiting zj might be a cache miss if x is 0 and a cache hit if x is not 0. Again, we can record the timing and draw a new figure. We conclude that if the execution consumes obviously longer time, then x should be zero, because this unique situation only appears if the analyze out of order execution happens and the input x is zero. So there is a new leak because of the out of order execution of the memory load at line eight. From this example, we can think about how to detect such leaks. There are four challenges we need to address. The first one is about how to model the hardware out of order execution in the software. The second one is about how to identify the specific out of order cases from all potential out of order behaviors. The third challenge is about how to realize such behavior in the program analysis. 
And the last question is about how to obtain the right input that may cause leak on the out of order execution. To address the challenges, we propose a technique named out of order symbolic execution. Specifically, given a program with symbolic input and concrete input, we start the symbolic execution. At memory instructions, the symbolic executor calls out of order generation to generate potential out of order behaviors. In out of order generation, it invokes necessity analysis to filter unnecessary out of order cases. It also leverages the order modeling to realize the out of order execution of two memory events in new symbolic states. With the generated new symbolic states, the symbolic executor conducts the cache leak analysis with a given cache specification and output to the detected timing leaks. And we continue symbolic execution until all out of order states have been explored. Next, we go through the four components one by one. The out of order generation is the core component of our method. I will use an example to explain high level idea. Here we have an in order event trace P1 that consists of four memory events A, B, C, and D. We assume that B depends on A, D depends on C, and C is independent of both A and B. Let's begin with P1. Each time at a memory event, we use the out of order generation to start a backtrack analysis. The first event is A. The backtrack fails quickly because there are no events before A. Going to the second event B, the backtrack also fails because B depends on A. The next event is C. This time the backtrack succeeds because C is independent of B. We fork out a new symbolic state and flip C and B in this state. Then we continue the backtrack from D to C, which also fails due to your assumed dependency. We now finish P1, so we switch to P2 and backtrack from C to A, which forks out a new state and flips C and A. We continue along P2, which backtrack from B to C and failed because such reordering already happened. The following backtracking from D to B success and a new state is forked. By repeating such analysis, we finally obtain four new out of order traces P2, P3, P4, and P5, which can be used for the subsequent cache leak analysis. In the out of order generation example, several backtrack operations failed. That's because the other necessity analysis decided that the two given events cannot form a necessary out of order execution. The necessity analysis has three checks. The first one is a distance check. If the in order program distance between two memory instructions is larger than the order buffer size, then the two instructions cannot physically form an out of order execution. The second one is about its dependency. If two memory events are reachable in the data dependency graph of the executed event trace, then it cannot join the out of order execution because of the dependency. The third one is about the cache effect. If the different execution orders of two events may cause different cache state, then the two events qualify for out of order execution in our analysis. If all the three checks are satisfied, the analysis returns true, otherwise it returns false. The third component is to realize the out of order behavior of two given memory events in symbolic execution. Here we use the motivating example again, and we want to schedule the event load Y right before event load X. We call them as CRT and PRV respectively. Generally, we divide reorder modeling into four steps. The first step is to fork a new state AUX in symbolic execution that is going to execute event PRV. And the second step is to redirect AUX to execute CRT first. The third step is to make the next event of CRT point to PRV. And the last step is to reset the next event of the last dependent instruction of PRV which is to continue symbolic execution after the reordering of CRT and the PRV. The component is the cache leak analysis. We first model a program P as a function of sensitive input, insensitive input, and the out of order schedule. So P is leakage free if the cache behavior of a memory event remains the same for all sensitive inputs. P has leaks if one of the following two situations appears. The first is that there are two different sensitive inputs, S1 and S2, that their cache behaviors are different. The second is that for any sensitive input S, the cache behavior on the out of order execution differs from the cache behavior on the in order execution. Here we ignore the details of the cache heat constraint, and in cache leak analysis, 
we use SMT solver to reason about the satisfiable sensitive inputs. We conduct the experiments on a set of real-world ciphers and other programs. In total, we collected 24 programs from more than 10 different sources. They are typically not large programs, but very computation intensive. We use the two different set associative cache settings and three different processor reorder buffer size parameters to run the experiments. And we focus on two timing leak types as introduced in the cache leak analysis. In total, we found that 19 programs are leakage free under all the experimental settings, and five programs have leaks under at least one setting. And the time, the out of order traces, and the amount of leaks all increase in line with the increasing real buffer size. However, the increased cache associativity does not always correspond to more leaks. The second experiment is to evaluate the impact from compiler optimization levels. We compare the results of O1, O2, and O3 against the result of O0. The four scatter plots visualize the comparison of the amount of traces, the invoked necessity analysis checks, the analysis time, and the amount of detected leaks. Each point above the diagonal line means a winning case of higher optimizations, and the points below the diagonal line represent the winning cases of the O0 result. From the scatter plots, we observe that higher compiler optimizations increase the number of out of order traces, increase the total analysis time, reduce the involved necessity analysis checks, and most importantly, they decrease the amount of found leaks. We also consider the CPU speculative execution and other speculative modeling in our out of order symbolic execution. Let's call it CMO3 plus. We evaluate CMO3 plus and compare the results against the original CMO3. Our results show that CMO3 Plus detected one more leaky program than original CMO3. The average analysis time in CMO3 Plus increases about 3 hours for each leaky benchmark. And the CMO3 Plus detected much more leaks than original CMO3 because the speculative execution actually exacerbates the leaky situations. Finally, we come to our conclusion. We proposed a new symbolic execution-based method to detect cache timing leaks due to out-of-order execution. We developed four new components for analysis. And for future work, we need more efforts to exploit the timing leaks in practice. Thank you for listening. For more details, please refer to our paper or contact me directly.